Yeah, can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah? Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You remember we were uh, learning about uh, riveted joints, correct? Okay. Are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, so we are learning about riveted joints. In continuation with that, we will now move on to uh, so far, we learned about bilar joints design. We'll move on to diamond riveted joint, which essentially is used for roof and bridges work. And also, the diamond joints provide uniform strength for the joint. Okay? Please note down the sketch. Please note down the sketch without these dimensions. Just note down the sketch. So, these are the two plates, okay, which are butt against each other, and two cover plates are used for the riveting. So note down the sketch first. <clears throat> so we had done this, I guess. Yeah? We we were doing this. We have taken this diagram. So yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's also called losses joint. I think we need to go to design procedure for uh, diamond joint, correct? Huh? Also, we started the first problem. Oh, we started with first problem, right? Yeah. So we were there here. Yeah. Have you noted down the problem? Yes, sir. Okay. So I'll go through the problem. So please look into your books now. So design a losses joint to connect two plates 20 mm thick and 350 mm wide. That is the value of B. The allowable tensile stress for plate is 90 megapascal and allowable shear and compressive stress for rivet material are 55 megapascal and 110 megapascal respectively. So we need to design and calculate the joint efficiency. Okay, so we are given with uh, the plate thickness T to be equal to 20 mm and the tensile strength of 90 megapascal shear stress of pivot material is 55 MPa and crushing or compressive strength is 110 megapascal, right? So with the T value being given, we can find out diameter of the rivet and uh, we can take the standard diameter of the rivet from the table. Since it is more than 25 mm here in this case, so diameter of the hole becomes, one. you add 1.5 mm to the diameter of the rivet that will become diameter of the hole then uh, thickness of double strap so as i said in the previous class if not given we are uh, we are going to take equal width cover plates okay with chain riveting right so for that the thickness of inner and outer plate is 0.625 t so find out thickness of double strap then uh, strength of solid plate is given by BT sigma T. The difference between earlier riveted joints and diamond joint is that here we are going to use the width of plate for calculation of strength of solid plate. Okay. And then find out shear strength of one rivet in double shear and then find out crushing strength, then tearing strength of plate at outer row. So that we can find out using B minus DH into T sigma T. Then uh, number of rivets required. For a diamond joint, we can get it by pairing strength divided by lowest strength of one rivet, that is either PS or PC. Then find out shearing strength of all the rivets because in a diamond joint, right, so we'll have so many number of rivets. So this number of rivets we need to find out and arrangement can be done accordingly. Okay, so we need to find out the shearing strength of all the rivets, crushing strength of all the rivets, and then find the joint efficiency. And only important aspect here is, in a diamond joints, you will get efficiency to be more than 90% all the time. That's why diamond joints are superior and used for uh, bridge, uh, bridge works mostly 
okay so the efficiency of diamond joint normally goes above 90% okay if you are getting below 90% recheck your calculations is that okay so note down this problem and complete this problem any doubt anybody no sir yeah please complete the problem Darshan. Yes, sir. Noting down. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mm. Note down. Aritiksha. Yes, sir. Are you able to understand? Yeah, yes, sir. Mm. Note down. Let me know if you are completed with this. Once you complete this, tell me. Are you getting the same values? After calculation, is there any variation? Same only. Same. Same. So can you show the next page? Yeah. This is a tearing strength of plate at outer row. That is very important there because outer row will have only one rivet. Okay. So tearing strength with reference to outer row is important. Then find out number of rivets required.
So find out uh, the number of rivets. Finding out number of rivets is more important. Finished. So two minutes. Yeah. And uh, whatever that I have indicated here is the arrangement of rivets. Okay, in case of a diamond joint, when we have nine rivets, so we can have three, three, two, and one. So the this joint you may you may be asked to write down this joint. So see that you arrange them properly, something like this. This is how the arrangement of nine rivets can be done. Yes, sir, done. Done. Okay. Go to the next. Have you all finished with this? Yeah. Anybody needing time? Ankit Gangadhar, Shiva yes, Soldier, Guda Jain Reddy, have you noted down? Yes, sir. Okay, Rishi Dineshwar, noted? Yes, sir. Sanjay Gauda? Yes, sir. Fine. We'll go to the next now. Sanjay? Yes, sir. Okay. Right. So the next is the eccentrically loaded riveted joints. Okay. So eccentrically loaded riveted joints is what we are going to see next. That is how the, the, the arrangement of uh, the riveted joints and the loading it will be transfers in this direction. Okay. And uh, these are these are the rivets which I can say. And this is x bar is the distance of CG, okay, from y axis. Y bar is the distance to CG from x axis. Is that okay? So these are and the E stands for eccentricity with reference to center of gravity of the riveted joint arrangement. Okay. So in eccentrically loaded riveted joints load is applied in transverse direction and the location of CG with reference to load is the distance called eccentricity. X bar and Y bar are the distances or the coordinates of center of gravity in X and Y direction. Okay. So first, uh, anyway, anyway, before we go to that, note down the sketch clearly. So note down eccentrically loaded riveted joints as a ding and note down the sketch clearly into your notebook. Please note it down in a bigger uh, uh, scale. Don't uh, write it in smaller scale. So write it neatly, legibly, uh, clearly, okay? Because we'll be using step by step on the same sketch, right? Uh, so please write down the sketch clearly.
Marcelo Rolpa, one. Present, sir. Two. Abhishek. Three. Four. Adash Desa. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Present, sir. Nine. Present, sir. Ten. Present, sir. Eleven. Twelve. Present, sir. Thirteen. Fourteen. Present, sir. Fifteen. Present, sir. Sixteen. Seventeen. Present, sir. Eighteen. Nineteen. Present, sir. Twenty. Present. Twenty-one. Yes, sir. Twenty-two. Present, sir. Twenty-three. Yes, sir. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Present, sir. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Thirty. Thirty-one. Thirty-two. Thirty-three. Thirty-four. Yes, sir. Thirty-five. Thirty-six. Thirty-seven. Thirty-eight. Thirty-nine. Forty. Yes, sir. Forty-one. Forty-two. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Forty-one is present, Prince Prabhakar. Prince Prabhakar. Yes, sir. Forty-two. Yes, yes, sir. Forty-three. Yes, sir. Forty-four. Present, sir. Forty-six. Forty-seven. Yes, sir. Forty-eight. Yes, sir. Forty-nine. Fifty. Yes, sir. Fifty-two. Yes, sir. Fifty-three. Yes, sir. Fifty-four. Yes, sir. Fifty-five. Fifty-six. Yes, sir. Fifty-seven. Fifty-eight, fifty-nine, sixty. Yes, sir. Sixty-one, sixty-two. Yes, sir. Sixty-three. Wait. Sixty-five. Present, sir. Sixty-six. Present, sir. Sixty-seven. Kaitanya. Chaitanya, Mahesh, Nishant, Ramesh, present sir. Yendre Ramesh, last half class of Bandil Lantre. Nishant, Nishant, Akshat, present sir. Sautri Kran, present sir. Mahi Maharaj, Sri Vatsan, present sir. Madan Kumar, Suman Javier, Manu, Shadab, Ganesh, Vijay Kumar, yes sir. Rishi, Zayar Hussain. Present, sir. Yeah, come back to. I hope you have finished with your sketch, right? Yes, so yes, sir. To analyze. So how to analyze when you have eccentrically loaded riveted joint like this is given? Let us look at how to analyze this such type of riveted joints. Okay. Now, so we have got four rivets. Like this, I take out these four rivets and number them as rivet one, rivet two, rivet three, 
and rivet 4. Okay. And here E is the eccentric distance. Okay. That is force is shifted by an eccentric distance E. Okay. And what we'll have here is we will have a direct force on the rivets denoted by FD, direct shear force on each of the rivets and the eccentricity provides secondary shear force F1, F2, F3, F4 and so on. Is that okay? That is the eccentricity E. Okay. This eccentricity E will provide secondary shear force on the rivets, okay, denoted by F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, F6, depending upon the number of rivets in the joint. What this secondary shear force does is that it tries to rotate the joint about its center of gravity, C. Is that okay? Is that okay? So there are two forces. One is the direct shear force FD that is denoted something like this. Okay. That is direct shear force FD on each of the rivet in the direction of applied force. Are you with me? Are you with me? So you will have two forces acting on eccentrically loaded riveted joints. One is the direct shear force on each of the rivets denoted by FD. And the second one is because of eccentricity, because of eccentricity, there is going to be secondary shear force F1, F2, F3, F4 and so on, which tries to rotate the joint about its CG. So while designing a riveted joint subjected to external eccentric loading, we need to consider both direct shear force and secondary shear force. That is F1, F2 and so on and FD as well. Is that okay? So when you have the direct shear force and the secondary shear force clubbed together, what we are going to have is direct shear force, then we have secondary shear force, the angle that is subtended by these two forces is denoted by is denoted by for first rivet theta 1, for second rivet it is theta 2, for third rivet it is theta 3, and for fourth rivet it is theta 4. This theta is the angle subtended between direct force FD and secondary shear force F2 or F1, F3, F4 and so on. Okay, this is theta 1, this is theta, I mean theta 2 here, theta 3, this is theta 4, is the angle between direct force and the secondary shear force. Are you with me? Are you with me? Yeah? Are you there? Yes, sir. So that means in the first stage, when you have got a joint something like this, you draw the lines connecting from CG to center of each of the rivet, call them as L1, L2, L3, L4. Before that, name the rivets as 1, 2, 3 and 4. Is that okay? Finish this part first. Again, write down 4 rivets over there. Okay? Name them as 1, 2, 3, 4. The naming can be any direction from any uh, direction you want, you can choose. And from center of gravity, from center of gravity, okay, join to the center of each rivet, okay, join to the center of each rivet and then call them as distances L1, L2, L3, L4, L4, okay, according to the number of, the number that is given to the rivet. First, join these lines. Then we'll draw lines for F1, F2, F3, and F4. Is that okay? Is that okay? Finish this much now.
please write down clearly legibly on a bigger scale right don't try to put it in a small space it it will be confusing later on for you so the way i have written write legibly clearly giving good amount of space note down this uh, description as well on this description direct for direct shear force fd and secondary shear force f1 f2 f3 and so on once you note it down once you are completed let me know while noting down see that this f1 is perpendicular to line l1 f2 line is perpendicular to l2 line f3 line is perpendicular to f3 line is perpendicular to l3 line and f4 line is perpendicular to l5 line okay then they all of them put together will try to rotate the riveted joints about its center of gravity is very easy do it systematically write down systematically first identify the rivets as 1 2 3 4 then from cg join to the center of each of the rivets call them as distances l1 l2 l3 and l4 then from center of each of the rivet draw a line perpendicular to l1 call it as f1 draw a line perpendicular to l2 call it as f2 draw a line perpendicular to l3 call it as f3 and similarly f4 right so they are called secondary shear forces which tries to rotate the joint about its cg and this is because of eccentricity that is provided in the joint is it okay finish da so one minute
Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, next is don't you need not take the sketch uh, separately. You write down. You write down F D. Okay. Each from the center of each of the rivets. Write down F D. Okay. In the direction of applied force. On the same sketch, from center of the center of each of the rivets. Okay. Draw an arrow pointing downwards, which is the direction of applied load. So indicate it as F D. That is. It will be something like this. First, you finish. So you have anyway F one here, F two there. Okay, something like this. This is F one, F two, and this is F three, and this is F four. Correct. So now we got the clarity now. So write down a vertical line from. Center of each of the rivets and call them as direct for direct shear force F D. Done. On the same sketch, you have finished with F one, F two, F three, F four. Now just draw. A arrow downwards from the center of each of the rivets, indicating direct shear force F D from each of the rivets. Are you there? Completed now. Completed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go to now come here to the sketch. So we have noted down F one, F two, F three, and F four, which are drawn perpendicular to the lines L one, L two, L three. And L4. Then we have noted down direct shear force F D from each of the rivets. Now the angle subtended between direct shear force and secondary shear force, okay, is theta, right? So write down this is theta one, theta two, theta three, and this is theta four. Write down. Theta one, theta two, theta three, theta four. Then we'll go to the design procedure. Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, uh, Alap Mundiyor. Chinmay, are you there? Yes, sir. Now, Chinmay, tell me, how do you start from rivet ne from naming till the end that we took theta one? Just explain one by one. How did we start and how did we end with this nomenclature? We named the rivets one, two, uh, three, four, okay. and then uh, we find the center of gravity, hmm. and then we uh, join uh, each rivet to the center of gravity and call it L one, L two, L three, L four. Okay. And then uh, we we write F one, F two, F three, F four. Hmm. And then uh, in the direction no, of applied. Dry, dry, uh, drawing F one, F two, F three, F four is how, with reference to what? Uh, draw perpendicular to L one to get L1, F one. Yeah, perpendicular to L two to get F two. Correct. Yes, sir. That's very important. Yeah. Uh, then uh, in the direction of force, we draw F D for each okay. rivet. Okay. And then we mark the angles between F D and F three. Okay. Uh, I mean F one, F two, F three, F four. Okay. Fine. Mark it up. Fine. Anybody? Any doubt in this? Sanjay, Shyam, Sundariyal. Any doubt here? Darshan. No sir. No sir. 
okay got because this is very very important part of the eccentrically loaded riveted joints is it okay so we need to identify rivet numbers 1 2 3 4 then uh, draw from cg draw lines to center of the rivets call them as l1 l2 l3 l4 then draw lines perpendicular to these l1 l2 l3 l4 to get secondary shear force f1 f2 f3 f4 then draw from center of each of the rivets draw a line in the direction of applied force call them as direct shear force fd and the angles subtended by the direct shear force and secondary shear force is the angle theta this much information we need to have before we start designing a riveted joint which is loaded eccentrically got it now right yeah now come to the design procedure for eccentrically loaded riveted joint so first job is what okay just we now uh, chinmay read out we have to find out center of gravity of the rivets that is we need to find out x bar and y bar so how do we find x bar and y bar is from your cg and mi chapter of your mechanics we have learned that we can find out center of gravity with reference to x that is x1 xt x3 plus so on and so forth divided by number of rivets that is they are the distances in x direction for rivets 1 2 3 4 and so on similarly find out y bar by y1 plus y2 plus y3 plus so on divided by number of rivets y1 is the distance in y direction for rivet number 1 y2 is the distance with reference of rivet 2 in y direction and so on that is here i have given here x1 x2 x3 and so on are horizontal distances from y axis that is horizontal this is the y axis if i take they are the horizontal distance this is rivet 1 2 3 and 4 so with reference to y axis okay so the distance x1 for, for first rivet become 0 for fourth it will become 0 but for two this is the distance okay x3 and then for this i mean x2 is this this i call it as x2 because rivet number 2 and this distance is what what is this distance i can take x for third rivet okay x3 correct for x4 and x1 will become zero correct huh? so this is x1 x2 x3 x4 then y1 y2 y3 are vertical distances from x axis that is if i take just one second i change the pen if i take this as x axis okay then this distance with reference to rivet number 1 so this is going to be what y1 correct and for 2 again this is the distance okay that i call it as y2 and with this, because x axis is the reference and uh, the distances y3 and y4 are going to be equal to zero is that okay this is how we take distances x1 x2 x3 and so forth so on and y1 y2 y3 and so on anybody any doubt in this any doubt in this yeah if you have no doubt please note down up to this then we will go to the next part of the design procedure first step is to find the cg of the rivets x bar and y bar x bar is distance x1 plus x2 plus x3 for corresponding rivets divided by total number of rivets n similarly for y y bar it is vertical distances from x axis that is for rivet 1 it is y1 rivet 2 it is y2 rivet 3 it is y3 and so forth divided by number of rivets n
So how we get x1, x2, x3 is from a1, x1 plus a2, x3 plus a3, x3 and so on divided by area of so many number of rivets. So area rivet diameter remains same. So therefore area is common, same. You have taken it out. So here also A is taken out. So A and A gets cancelled. So what we are left with is X bar is equal to so and so, Y bar is so and so. Yeah. One minute, sir. Yeah, yeah. Done, sir. Yeah. So now to find distances L1, L2, L3, of course, this we know. Theta is the angle between direct force and secondary shear forces, F1, F2, and so on. And they are named as theta 1, 2, 3, 4, so on. Okay. Yeah. Now we have to identify rivet that has theta less than 90 degrees. Right. This is very, very important. So after finding out distances, L1, L2, L3, L4, find out or identify the rivet that has got theta less than 90 degrees. This is required because we need to identify the heavily loaded rivet among all the rivets. Okay, we have in this case four rivets. We need to identify the heavily loaded rivet. So how do we identify heavily loaded rivet is that it should be farthest, okay from CG and its theta should be less than 90 degrees. So we consider that rivet as the farther, I mean heavily loaded rivet. The heavily loaded rivet is the one which is farthest from CG. That is how do we decide farthest? That is by finding out L1, L2, L3, L4. We can identify which rivet is farthest and which rivet's theta is less than 90 degrees okay so the rivet which has got which is farthest from cg and whose theta is less than 90 degrees is considered to be heavily loaded rivet okay so for that heavily loaded rivet we need to find cos theta that's given by distance x divided by l for that heavily loaded rivet if one is heavily loaded rivet this is going to be x1 by l1 
if the river heavily loaded river is 3 then this is going to be x3 by l3 and so on okay then find out direct load per rivet that is given by f that is the load acting on the riveted joint okay that is the load acting on the riveted joint is f so f divided by number of rivets will give you direct load fd okay per rivet is that okay direct load per rivet is load acting on the joint divided by number of rivets then normal load on heavily loaded rivet that is given by fel by l1 square plus l2 square plus l3 square and so on for whatever number of rivets that are present so which is ln here ln is the distance of heavily loaded rivet if one is heavily loaded rivet we take it as l1 if so, rivet number two is heavily loaded we take that as l2 and so on right so once i know the direct load per rivet and the normal load on heavily loaded rivet i can find out the resultant load that is given by root of fd square plus fn square plus 2 fd fn cos theta under root for resultant load and that resultant load divided by shear stress will give me the area of the rivet because shear stress is given by resultant load divided by area of rivet so from there i extract area of rivet which is equal to pi d square by 4 solving it we are going to get the diameter of the rivet then do the start take the standard diameter of the rivet from the table this is one we need to do it is very very simple right so have you noted down to find distances l1 l2 l3 l4 have you noted yes sir yes. yeah now note down this much yeah not on this which is heavily loaded rivet tarun tarun pachori yes sir which rivet we call it as heavily loaded rivet uh, rivet number 2 is having theta less than 90 degrees no don't tell that theta na rivet number 2 in general we call a rivet okay. as heavily loaded rivet if yeah if theta less than 90 yeah the farthest from the cg and theta is less than 90 is the heavily loaded rivets okay fine others please go through please note down this much next step is to find cos theta find cos theta for heavily loaded rivet cos theta is given by x by l i think this x i should have taken this capital x once you have finished please let me know Please note down clearly, neatly. So here, whatever, uh, whatever that I have written here, normal load on heavily loaded rivet, this LN, okay, is the rivet number which is heavily loaded. If uh, rivet number one is heavily loaded, we take LN as equal to L1. If rivet number two is heavily loaded rivet, we take it as L2 and so on, okay. So this is common, L1 square plus L2 square plus L3 square plus L4 square, that's common. F is the load acting on the riveted joint, E is the eccentricity of the joint.
Yes, sir. Done. Done. Okay. Um, I want. Uh, uh, who is there? Uh, sir, could you uh, could you go back to the previous? Um... Yeah. This one. No, sir. The next one. So the next one. Yeah, yeah, coming, coming. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um. Prayag Vasudevan. Yes, sir. Please read the steps uh, once. Yes, sir. So design procedure. Uh, yeah, others, I... others, please look into your books. Others, please look into your books. Okay. Uh, take it into your mind along with prayag was there. Yeah, prayag. Find the center of gravity of rivets that is uh, x bar and y bar. Okay. X bar is equal to a x one a one x one plus a two x two. That you need not go to the third. Uh, that's x one plus x two plus x three. Yes, sir. So uh, a into x one plus x two plus x three by a into n. That is the number of rivets. Similarly for y. Y bar is equal to Y1 plus Y2 plus Y3 by the number of rivets. Mm -hmm. Here, X1, X2, X3 are horizontal distance from Y axis. Okay. And Y1, Y2, Y3 are vertical distance from X axis. Okay. Now, to find the eccentricity, uh, we take the L1, L2, L3, and L4. Okay. Now, I, uh, note we have to identify, identify the rivet that has uh, theta less than 90 degree. Okay. Also, identify the farthest uh, rivet from center of gravity. Okay. The rivet that is farthest from the center of gravity and theta is less than 90 is called the heavily uh, loaded rivet. Okay. Now, uh, direct load per rivet FD is equal to F by number of rivets. You yeah, missed out on cos theta. Yeah. Yeah. Find uh, cos theta. Cos theta is X by L for heavily uh, uh, I, uh, heavily loaded rivet. Yeah. Uh, direct load per rivet is equal to FD by F. Uh, FD is equal to F by number of rivets. Okay. Uh, normal load on heavily loaded. Uh, normal load on heavily loaded rivet. Uh, FN is equal to FELN by L1 square plus L2 square plus Sum L3 square. Sum of L square, right? Sum of L square. L square. Yes. Right. So where N is the uh, heavily loaded rivet. So F1 is equal to F E L1 by L1 square plus L2 square sum of all L. Uh, okay. That is a, if L1 is uh, heavily loaded, we take it as L1. Yes. If 2 is heavily loaded, we take it as L2. That's yes. it. The next resultant load. Resultant load is equal to uh, FR is equal to square root of FD square plus FN square plus 2 into FD FN cos theta. Okay. Shear stress is equal to FR by area of rivet where area of rivet is equal to FR by shear stress. So area of rivets, uh, A is equal to pi D square by 4. So D is equal to uh, 2 square root of A by pi. Fine. Fine. OK. Please go through the procedure. Next class, we'll start with the problem. OK. We'll start with the problem in the next class. So please go through before you come to the next class. Is that OK? This is also a very important uh, area from examination point of view, right? So we'll solve more problems. OK, then. We'll meet next class. Thank you, sir. Yeah.